Hello again. So recently I posted that I got some new LEDs. I got the Acro Illumination 26 LEDs and um, I'm very pleased with the results and the crawls have been responding wonderful. My whole tank has been fantastic since I've switched over. I started doing research on how to dial in the LEDs correctly and once I began uh, getting into the forums and getting on the web and YouTube or anywhere else to to learn as much as I could about the uh, aqua illumination settings uh, I discovered uh, there was quite a variation of opinion and people were setting these LEDs you know whether we're talking the aqua illumination or the radions from ecosystems or whatever the settings were all over the map on the web and I thought how can there be so many variations we know enough now about lights and the spectrums and all that uh, this stuff has been designed to, to do just what we need and so I thought I would share with you now you know I just pretty much keep I keep the low light type of calls the softies and not so much the aquaporers and the hard calls um, but uh, and so I wanted to share with you the proper settings and, and what I've come to know over the years and really go into the history of coral keeping because the history of coral keeping has everything to do with lights. In fact, when I first co started collecting coral, uh, I did this back in 1979 and little to nothing was known about how to keep coral alive and uh, there was a book written by Robert Strawnham back in the 1960s and then I think he updated it in the early 70s um, but he had collected coral and had lots of it and he got it from the Florida Keys he lived down in Florida and uh, the way he was keeping this coral alive was he was uh, having to take the coral out of the tank he, he would collect pretty good sized heads and he would, he would actually take the coral out of the head and sunbathe them and <laughs> that's exactly what he did so all we really knew back then was uh, the only way to keep them alive was to have them in direct sunlight and and uh, to, to give them that my first tank that I set up in the uh, with, with coral um, was put in front of a sliding glass door so it would get direct sunlight for uh, several hours during the day uh, and that kept that it was finger call in fact and it kept that call uh, alive for many months but certainly not years just for for months and uh, and really probably would have done better if my water quality was better because uh, coral keeping is not just lights it is water quality but we're going to be talking about lights today uh, and then a little bit you can't talk completely about lights without talking about water quality because the water quality uh, and water coloration affects the uh, intensity of the lights and, and, and uh, the light changes as it, it interacts through the medium of air and the medium of water but uh, let's, let's go and uh, kind of take a little walk through history so back in those days we knew nothing about how to keep coral alive other than direct sunlight um years went by i, I mean honestly from 79 80 when i first started putting coral in my tank uh, at least it seemed like it, well 20 years later really that uh, people we were starting to have success keeping corals and, uh, and and that was happening really the turn of the century um, and so the thinking back then was light intensity the more light the better and so um, I when it got back into reef keeping and well around 2004 I think it was um, I knew I couldn't keep corals underneath the regular fish lights I had to go out and get I went and bought a shop light and, and I knew that I couldn't just use any fluorescence. I had to use the daylight bulbs. And back then they started to sell a tinic. So I had a daylight bulb. I had a tinic bulb. And you could actually get a tinic bulb and the, uh, the, 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 the original uh, fluorescent 
bulb sizes. Um, but daylight bulbs were 6,000 K, and that's degrees Kelvin. That uh, that K is a measure of uh, not light intensity, but uh, really the light color. Um, and that's used throughout science for determining the the, the spectrum and color of stars and the and the elements and the and the temperatures of stars. But that's why we call it color temperature uh, when we're talking about degrees Kelvin. But we can just think of it as the the color we're talking about. Our typical um, daylight would be six seven thousand degrees at Kelvin. And that's what I was using. Uh, my friends that were in a hobby, and I, I quickly joined the club. Uh, they were they were using uh, VHOs, and those that can afford to uh, to step it up a little bit were beginning to use metal halides. Now, metal halides you can get them at four, 14,000 K. That's quite a significant uh, jump in color. From typical daylight to a very bluish type of light, and so um, they were they were using uh, maybe v in fact my one close friend was using the VHOs with the metal halides. And VHOs is your is like your fluorescent but very high intensity fluorescent bulbs. You hardly ever hear about them anymore. Some people still have them from the old days, uh, but yeah, I, you just don't hear about that. In fact. Uh, for those who had nano reefs and smaller tanks, they were using power compacts. And I think I even had power compacts for a while, but eventually we moved on and we moved to where uh, T5s would replace the power compacts. So uh, the thinking was, of course, the light intensity as much as possible, and the more lights the better. Probably a decade now I've been using T5s, but until recently now I have a combination of T5s with the uh, aqua illuminations. But the T5s you can get all the different spectrums uh, of bulb for different uh, colors with the Kelvin ratings. Uh, but we started to learn more about the spectrum because the T5s were, were designed for particular spectrums. I want you to look here at some of the research. So you know this is not just from my experience. Uh, from this website here, this is a little older uh, article that was written by AquariumAdvisory.com, Best Light Spectrum for Coral Growth. And I want to talk about spectrum for a while because it's it's significant. Uh, up to now, we've just been talking about light intensity and getting enough light and using metal halides. But when T5s came, uh, we knew that was, and, and we, all, we also knew that the coloration, the Kelvin rating was important for the coral growth and and coloration. So uh, looking at this article here, uh, it, it really gets into the spectrum and, and why the T5 bulbs and, and which bulbs and how, the, and how these bulbs are being designed uh, based on studies on uh, the spectrum on a reef. So from a very studies on the light spectrum has been the that lights with wavelengths between 370 to 500 nanometers are great for penetrating deep into the water. Such type of light in this wavelength ranges uh, include violet, blue, uh, parts of blue uh, of the light spectrum. The blue and violet light spectrums have proven to be the best over the years throughout the hobby for producing uh, coral growth and coral, coral color. Now, we refer to coral color, um, uh, in particular, not just the color, but how it fluoresces. These corals would be absorbing the light in a certain wavelength in the spectrum, but will radiate in a different wavelength, and thus the difference in coloration. The stronger fluorescence for light is in the range of 400 to 450 nanometers. It is therefore advisable to supply a light uh, 400 to 500 nanometer range to promote fluorescence to marine uh, photosynthesis in the in the tank. And what we're talking about is the you know the marine animal the um, the the corals. The coral itself is a marine animal, and but it it <laughs> those that are photosynthetic corals 
which most of the calls that we keep are, are really taking advantage of the chloroplast just like a plant would. And so the coral animal actually in a lot of ways is much like plants and we cultivate our corals much like we would cultivate uh, plants. But uh, let's take a look at the spectrum here because I, I want you to see this. Uh, this is a chart of the light spectrum and we have uh, 360 to 450, I'm sorry, 380 to 450 nanometer chart. Uh, violet, and then 450, 495, the blue, and then 495, the 570, green. So, and, and then, of course, in the shorter wavelengths, you have the ultraviolet, and then you start getting the long wavelengths, the 495, the 570, that's the green, and then the yellow color, and then the orange and the reds, the reds being the 620 to 750 nanometers. So looking at this chart, we're seeing that the the, the reds, orange, yellows, and even greens uh, don't penetrate as deep. But you do get some green, uh, but mostly the, in the blue and the violet spectrum is what's penetrating into the sea. And we can look at these this other chart, and this is showing us uh, on a graph the wavelength and how deep it penetrates you do have your light spectrum near to to kind of get a hold of and and so it was when you purchased the old uh, t5 bulbs you can look at that very chart on the side and see how much uh, violet and blue you're getting and sometimes they even throw in a little sp spike of red for some of those red colorations that you want to get for your corals so um, this whole article was written back when T5s and, and, and looking at the different brands of T5s and what they were offering in the, in the spectrum. <clears throat> Which ones did best? We kind of get a feel for the spectrum and how important it is to the photosynthesis uh, and the health of the coral animal. And also, <laughs> you also note that once you get down into these proper spectrums that are best and most efficient for the photosynthesis of the coral animal, this is also the best spectrum to eliminate the, the algae growth um, that you would find in higher nutrient and lower, uh, and, and lower depths in shallow water. So... Um, it's significant that if you get to get a nice clean spectrum rather than what we may call dirty light you get a nice clean spectrum with the with the the, uh, the, the ultraviolet the violets and the blues uh, you uh, wouldn't have as much allergy growth in the tank so now what about LEDs I mean they've come on the scene and and so many people now like myself are moving to the LEDs so unlike bulbs, LED lights can be dialed in uh, where the, the, the bulbs, you have to buy them for the, whatever spectrum that was actually, des they were designed to be. But now we got these uh, radions and the uh, aqua illumination and the uh, other competitors of LED lights that offer you the ability to dial in your own spectrum to whatever pleases you and this is why I'm actually putting this video together is because I've seen people dialing in their <laughs> their spectrum all over the map and, and so I, I want to take some time and, and show you what you should be doing and, and why we dial in the ultraviolet and the violets and the, and the blues and, and the greens and the reds just the way we do so, um, and the LEDs, uh, since they can be dialed in, we can dial them in uh, with the spectrum best for coral growth as well as fluorescence. So now what I want to do is I want to skip over to uh, another article that was written some time back and that you can look up and do some research from Advanced Aquarius. So if you go to advancedaquarius.com, uh, on the 2012 article in October, it, it, it's talking about this topic. 
And I think back then, I, I, once again, it was talking about spectrum for the sake of what what bulbs, if we're going to buy T5 bulbs, which bulbs, uh, looking at the spectrum in the box, which ones we're going to do best. And there's a lot of scientific research in this article, but I uh, just want you to be aware of it. But here's some here's some of the things that were found. Um, and so looking through and reading out this, this, this means that natural illumination underwater is not sufficient for photosynthesis until the sun rises approximately 15 degrees over the horizon. So what the article is saying is, um, you know, we could talk a lot about uh, natural light, but it, until the sun rises up above 15 degrees, that's when the photosynthesis is going to be uh, to be most efficient. In approximately 30 minutes after this, the illumination quickly increases to about half of the daily maximum value. And now we're talking about not just spectrum, but we're talking about illumination in the sense of intensity. Back in the beginning of the video, I was talking about how we thought more light, more light, more light. So, yeah, so when we... That's why I wanted to go through all the spectrum, but then come back with understanding spectrum as a frame of reference to why it's not just intensity, but in when we now look at the importance of intensity, that we have the frame of reference of uh, spectrum in our head already built in. So... Um, what this means is illumination quickly increases to about half of the daily maximum value. Yes, therefore, actual photoperiod is about nine hours. These are the factors an Aquarius should consider if he is wishing, or her, of course, to replicate natural light cycles. Exactly what I'm doing with actual illumination uh, LEDs is I'm using the automated features of it to, to give me the sunrise and sunset with a good with a good uh, nine hour period of uh, high illumination. And you should be dialing in your, your, uh, your radions or your Kessels or whatever you have to, to do this. And note that the 400 to 500 nanometer range is the most required since it provides the best coloration fluorescence and this is what we've been talking about and this article of course agrees and the longer wavelengths in 500-700 nanometer range is poorly utilized by marine photosynthetic organisms while we're talking about the coloration and fluorescence in corals and what spectrum brings that about but what you know that's for the coral but what do we see visually you know what, what what are we looking at so the human eye is very sensitive to the 520 to 600 nanometer range and therefore we do not need very much radiation power in that range even small amounts of illumination will be sufficient for the eye to perceive the tank as brightly lit this is important to note because a lot of people uh, could have what they think is very brightly lit tank and yet not a lot of illumination is going on or they can have a br brightly lit tank with very poor spectrum for corals so just because you you can't tell these things just by looking at your tank and so it's vital that you uh, when you buy bulbs you look at the spectrum or when you buy LEDs that you dial them in correctly. But one one more thing I want to mention about spectrum. We may want to supplement uh, 660 nanometers with our LEDs because it can be beneficial for those shallow water organisms. So uh, I do have uh, Blastomusa and if you have Stylos and you have Dragon and other uh, reddish color uh, corals um, I mean to bring out the reds you do want to have a little bit of a splash of 660 nanometer bring out the red wavelength so this wavelength in combination with the 400 to 420 nanometer range will promote the correct rendition of well of the purple color and that is I think some of what us would like especially us so that our purists would like to have the correct rendition we can 
we can change our bulbs and make our corals look completely different um, but uh, what would be the correct rendition in uh, uh, or if even if that matters so in some senses when you get lights as, as long as you get the right uh, you, you get the if you're getting a if you're getting good coral growth and you get the right intensity and you're getting pretty good spectrum then I guess it comes down to the last bit of adjustment is to what visually pleases you and so I, I think I um, I was listening to somebody talk about this on YouTube and yeah, it gets down to, to, to really two things. What's best for the corals and, and what visually pleases you. And yeah, for sure, that's the case. In fact, it is also the case with me because um, I find that uh, the the a, a blue tank doesn't visually please me. Although that's what I see most people like the best is they like their they like their, t their tanks with the 20k blue or I even find 14k a little bit too blue for my my taste and and, and I got to tell you this comes a lot from my preference comes a lot from all the hours hours and days and time I've been in the water on the reefs diving in and, and snorkeling and, and uh, spending lots of time on top of coral and looking at them and um, yeah obviously once you get down uh, with, when you're scuba diving you're down there 20 30 feet uh, yeah the world is blue there's no doubt about it but you still see the colors and your mind makes an adjustment for that uh, your mind your eye combination make adjustments in, in a sense and then uh, when I'm snorkeling on the shallow reefs you know 10 15 feet I see all the colors and I really want to replicate that and have that rendition in my aquarium and don't want it so blue so I find uh, that uh, you know I, I rather have a 10,000 K uh, visual tank than I would uh, 14 or 20,000 K but that's my that's me but let's talk about what's the best way to dial in um, are um, our LEDs well, what about intensity though we, we talked about that what is intensity and now that we got the spectrum dealt with well uh, this is why we talk about PAR and you hear so much about PAR that's photosynthetic active radiation that's what PAR is P-A-R <laughs> photosynthetic active radiation and though and the what we know is that uh, 400 micromoles of photons per meter squared per second is what the measurement we use for radiation power is optimal for coloration of corals. So 400 par. And we know that the 400 par is a lot of light getting down to the bottom. Radiation power four times below this level of 400 would be 100 Par, and that is sufficient to start production of chromoproteins in corals. So, um, this article is saying they recommend starting slowly with an initial lighting levels close to the lower boundary of 100 par. And then over the course of months, you gradually increase the par up to the 400. But we, we, we know that uh, you're going to get the best growth with the higher par. And this is a interesting thing now this is the difference between these very expensive LEDs and uh, the cheaper LEDs the these more expensive LEDs are going to give you the par you need the cheaper LEDs may give you the, the proper spectrum or and but they may have some dirty light mixed in or what I say they may have some more yellow and green than you should and <laughs> they may not and they probably won't give you the the 400 par in fact they may barely give you the 100 par so be careful about uh, the, the cheaper LEDs you have to know either through research or through measurement what these LEDs are going to do um, but also you got to remember that LEDs are very strong uh, directional lights and so with the proper lenses the uh, more expensive LEDs have proper lenses to diffuse the light and spread the light so instead of getting the 400 par only 
directly below the light you get you can get a good par reading spread out over the over the bottom of the aquarium so it makes a cone shape a lot of this research can be found on the web and a good source of it uh, and my favorite source and this is where we're going to come up with the recommendations of how to set your radions or your aquiluminas or your LEDs to the proper spectrum it was done by um, uh, corroboration between uh, radion and a Canadian wholesaler known as Reef Wholesalers and Reef Wholesalers did this uh, coral lab and so if you go out on the web take a look here and you can download this uh, research it's a very short read it's very worth the while but I'm going to go through the, the bottom line of it and what it means I actually like uh, the YouTube videos that uh, Tidal Gardens puts out I mean he's doing that uh, but this research paper is um, is done by um, Reef Wholesalers up in Canada, like I said. And it, it's going to show us uh, actually what they have done over the years to grow their corals. And, and like most, in fact, uh, most of these uh, wholesalers do is use the metal halides uh, for growth and with a T5 combination. Tidal Gardens does that. And in fact, Tidal Gardens often talks about how almost all wholesalers are still using metal halides, even if nobody else is. <laughs> they know that, uh, you know, they're, they're mass, mass producing corals or as much as growth as they can. They continue to use the, uh, you know, the bulletproof method in a sense. But uh, I want to go over the three different uh, spectrums they got listed here. And... The first up would be uh, for stony corals. And even though this research goes exactly into the detail that you may be interested in how it's done. But take a look at the SPS AB+. Now this is, this is to use the, your, the uh, radions uh, and set the spectrum to the best match. And this is what they're trying to do, the best match what they had with their T5 bulbs uh, to give it the, to match a ATI Blue Plus and the ATI Aqua Blue Special. So this is the spectrum that they, they're trying to get um, where the setting on the Radeon was 100% um, ultraviolet, 100% blue, 100% royal blue. And then they're going to dial down the white to 24% and 24% green and 24% red. And then you can set with radions. I can't do this with mine, but you can set with radions the intensity. So you can kind of start out with a lower intensity overall and then ramp that up over the course of months. Uh, or you can just raise your, your LEDs higher off the surface of the water which is one of the things they did. They had some that were 12 inches off and they had some that were up uh, when they were doing the research for the for the um, LPS. They raised it up to, to higher up in the, uh, like 24 inches away from the water, water surface. But uh, going through all of the forms, I had not seen just about, <laughs> I really didn't come across anybody who was setting up, putting their, their radions and setting them to this particular setting. Uh, in no case can, do I understand, you know, lowering the the, uh, the UV, the blue, and the royal blue. You want those set all the way up. For my aqua illumination, I have ultraviolet, violet, blue, and royal blue. So I, I keep all four of those up to the max. And then I dial down the, the white, the green, and the red to... Actually, I don't use this setting here. This is this is to match. They found what what best matches the uh, the T fives. But if you had used metal halides, then you would go with the, this setting here of the ultraviolet, the blue, and the and the royal blue all the way up, of course. And you're just going to tweak a little bit the white, the green, and the red. And so to match the metal halides and bring out the red corals and the red coloration the aquapora tarlosa and the purple dragons and the red dragons and the bonapora um, 
you would give it a little bit more red, a little less green, just a little tweak. And that's the only difference there. And actually, this is how I have my uh, aquilumination set up, uh, with one exception. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the third example is for the LPS Softy. And really, that's the kind of tank I have. But I chose to use the the setting for the monopora because I eventually want to get style as a monopora. Uh, and because I had the monopora a year ago, if you remember. And, and I actually still have a little bit of Superman uh, that is is living and, and didn't completely die off. And I hope to have that come back to life again. But uh, looking at this setting for the for the LPS, they really dialed down the white and to keep that intensity down and uh and the green and the red is is uh is tweaked a little bit so you can look at that so 100 percent on the ultraviolet to the uh, throughout the blue spectrum uh white is 15 percent green is 20 percent and the red is 25 percent my tank currently has 100% ultraviolet, violet, blue, and royal blue. Um, and then my green is 17% and my red is 30%. The only difference is I find this setting with the white down to 24% too blue for my taste. So I have now tweaked my, my white up to 35%. And that, that gives me a uh, more pleasing visual for my opinion and of course somebody else may like their tank a little bit more blue um but that's where i have mine set so um i found this this research very useful go out and grab yourself a copy of it it's available for free of course it's a pdf uh just uh, type in reef wholesalers uh, coral life study with radion uh, until you get find this uh web page um I think it's on the ecosystem webpage and or the direct or the ecosystem webpage has a link to direct you to the study so it's well worthwhile and hopefully that helped on you uh and setting up your leds so it's the same thing we're talking about here in in the world of corals you spend all this money on the on the best lights you can get dial them in dial them in correctly and hopefully this helps um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of opinion. We'd love to hear it all. Um, but uh, um, I, I did want to spend all that time talking about Spectrum up front so you see why I dial in and why this lab dials in the, the ultraviolet and the blues all the way up. Go ahead and uh, put your comments below and we can all learn from one another. Until next time.